It is so simple, ladies and gentlemen. This idea that, that is at the core of all of our teachings. I've been out there doing this for over 30 years now. The Erroneous Zones was published 30 years ago. And what I've discovered is what Earl Nightingale told me when I was just getting started in this whole business. When something called the strangest secret. We become what we think about all day long. We become what we think about all day long. But more than that, understanding that your thoughts are real, that they have an impact. Isn't it conceivable that your thought can have an impact on whether or not you can attract what you want into your life? That you can extend it out into a universe which is perfect, which, is, which has no need for you to interfere with it, which is always doing exactly what it is supposed to do. No restrictions on it. And it always has been doing it, and it always will be doing it. And everything that you're going through, it's all part of the perfection of all of this. That you are not any of the things that you've come to believe that you are. You're not what you have, you're not what you do, you're not your reputation. You spent a whole, a whole lifetime working on understanding that. I'm looking at the things that we believed in the morning of our life. What we were taught, what we were told when we came into this world. What you were told was important for you to do. It's important for you to go to school. It's important for you to get good grades. We throw this stuff at our children. We throw it at ourselves. It's important for you to look a certain way. It's important for you to make the team. It's important for you to defeat somebody else. It's important for you to, to make a lot of money, to advance in your profession. It's important for you to be a good daughter, to be a good mother, to take care of your family. It's important for you to have goals. It's important for you to, to figure out what other people are doing and get there ahead of them so that they don't get ahead of you. It's important for you to win. I'm just scratching at the surface here of all of these things that we've been conditioned and told, this is what you're here for, this is what it's about, and you bought into it. You, you just hook, line, and sinker. You, we took it. We all did. I did too. We all did. And then you get to a point and I just share with you this one, one observation from Jung called the stages of life. He says, thoroughly unprepared, we take the step into the afternoon of life. Worse still, we take this step with the false presupposition that our truths and ideas will serve as hitherto. But we cannot live the afternoon of life according to the program of life's morning. Hear that. Really hear that because most of you here are in the afternoon of your life and it has nothing to do with how old you are, by the way. This can happen at 14 or some of you stay in the morning of your life for 16 lifetimes. We cannot live the afternoon of life according to the program of life's morning. For what was great in the morning, what was great in the morning of your life, getting the grades, making the cheerleading team, being a good daughter, getting the gold star, saving your money, getting the job, whatever it is, what was great in the morning will be little at evening. And what in the morning was true, which is a big word here today, what in the morning was true will at evening have become a lie. Now imagine how many of us are attempting to live the afternoon of our life by lies. They just don't work anymore. I mean, is the most important thing for you to get ahead of somebody else? To look a certain way? To have the right jewelry on? To get the job? Or is it to be on purpose? Is it to be making a difference? 
Is it to understand what I wrote about in Ten Secrets for Success, the second secret? That you're not going to die with your music still in you. Is it to know God? Is it to feel close to something so profoundly important that in here there's a knowing that I haven't been actualizing it? I haven't been fulfilling it. What am I here for? What am I here for? It's a question that you begin to ask yourself when I speak about purpose. And then you say, well, it's to be like, it's to be like God. That's what God realization is, to return to that from which you originated, the place of your source, the Tao, to be the Tao, to be it, to be the great way. And what is the Tao like? What does it look like? What is it doing? <laughs> it's not doing anything. It's just constantly giving. It's just constantly offering. It's just constantly providing life. Billions and billions of life forms emanating from this invisible source that has always been just continuously doing it. Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you being like God? God is love, it says in the book of John. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in me. Your objective is to be like God. To return to your source, to your father, whatever you want to call it. And then we take things like organized religion and we think, well, because I'm, I'm going to church and I'm, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. But you have to remember that, that the source, that the Tao, excludes no one. It excludes no one. It doesn't say, you get to breathe and you don't. It does say, you get to have hair and you don't. It does those things, right? But it doesn't say, you get life and you don't. It says, it's for all of you, you're all one. And then we take organizations that say, only you get to get in. <laughs> only if you believe this way, do you get to be part of God. But that's not of God. So any thought that you have that excludes anyone is not a thought of God, it's not a thought of Tao. And that's why the number one source of conflicts on our planet today is about organized religions, fighting organized religions. And none of it is of God. Anything, anything that divides us, weakens us. Anything. Any thought that you have that divides you from somebody else, that makes you better than somebody else, that says this, any judgmental thought at all like that is not a thought of source. And the minute that you leave source, you lose the power to manifest. You lose the power to attract into your life what you want. You have moved away from source. And any thought that unites us, that includes us, that is of service, any thought of spirit and spirituality, that brings us together as one and recognizes the truth that all of us have come from the same source and that we are all breathing the same air and that we all came from the same place. So where does any organization that includes one and excludes other fit on the God realization scale? Way down here. You have to really be careful if you want to live the Tao, if you want to live this thing I'm speaking about and get yourself back into balance. If you want to be in balance, be in balance, then your, your habits have to start matching up with your desires in everything, in everything that you do. And it's just a simple matter of deciding to do it in all of your thoughts. Every place that you have any thought that is not aligned. Any place, any thought. So here are the thoughts that I'd like you to look at that keep you from the truth of Tao. All right? Um, every thought that you have that is on what's missing in your life. Every thought. 
that you have about what's missing in your life is an energy that allows you to become a vibrational match to attracting more of what's missing in your life.